Good morning. Welcome to a early rise in smoke here at the Piper's Table. I'm sitting at kind of a strange angle. I got the phone propped up here on a book and I know there's this terrible uh, glare from the light if I move. So it's just kind of a strange angle. It just is what it is. But anyways, this morning, um, we're going to smoke something that I think is a very unique and interesting blend. Um, if you saw, I have a couple videos ago, I mm, smoked and touched on an aromatic, which is not really something that I have been much of a fan of. Um, in recent years, I pretty much don't smoke aromatics at all, but this one, um, kind of fooled me. I, this is another, uh, mail gift from my friend Joe up in Maine. He mailed me some of this to try. He's a big Mac Baron fan. Um, now Joe personally tends to be, um, more into the aromatics. So some of the blends he sent me. Um, I was kind of surprised by it because some of them were Englishes and stuff. And honestly, I didn't know anything about the Mac Baron um, Plum Cake is what it is. It's a Mac Baron Plum Cake Navy Blend. Um, but the smell of it, it definitely has Latakia in it. And it has enough Latakia and enough smoky flavor, but it's also got enough of those kind of like sweet notes. It smells like tobacco. It does not smell like an aromatic. It has a sweet note to it, but on just following my nose alone, I actually, when I put this in the jar, actually set it in my pipe cabinet in the Balkan section. So it fooled me. I, on smells alone, I thought that this was um, more on the Balkan blends is what I thought, but it's actually an aromatic, but it's a really interesting one. And it's, um, it's got black Cavendish. It's got some cask mellowed Burleys. It's got, um, it's loaded with like a bouquet of, of really ripe Virginias. It's got this awesome, uh, spicy raisin like stewed fig smell that you get from like some really nice virginias and it's got cyprian latakia um and now that i know it's an aromatic which i've known for a while i've been smoking this for a while now um um well i lost my train of thought there but anyways um there's also a top note on this and it is um jamaican rum and you definitely get this um, liquor type um, smell for sure in the tin note. It's a, uh, you can smell that kind of like the sweet spice. It's almost, um, I can't think of the word right now, but it almost tingles in your nostrils a little bit. It's like a, it's not unpleasant, but it's a little bit sharp, but similar to uh, the plum pudding actually um, I think the plum puddings this the, the, the aromas of the tobacco are so pungent that it almost stings tingles awakens your um, your deep in your nasal cavity when you give mm -hmm. that stuff a whiff and this not as strong not um, quite as pungent as that but it's entering that territory and it's almost like like a nice kind of like floral um, or kind of a fruity or floral smelling scotch almost, in my opinion. But yeah, it's a really interesting tin note. It almost, honestly, and some people might get upset or say that I'm a blasphemer for even saying this, but the Virginia smells are so strong and the tobacco, the real tobacco smells are so strong and that top note smell and the Latakia and stuff is just there enough. It almost smells like a Lakeland blend. 
and it's floral. It's really floral and fluty, fruity in an interesting way. But anyways, I will stop talking about just the smells of it. I'll take a sip of coffee and check this sweet fly fishing mug that my wife got me. I know we really only talk about pipes on here, but I uh, am a fishing nut. That's my other hobby is fishing. So I was very excited on this. The good old rainbow trout. But anyways, we are going to smoke it today out of the prints. So let's get into this. It's a good smoke. And this stuff is old school. I, I mean, this is a pretty famous blend. I mean, this stuff has been around since the 50s. Um, and I think it is fairly popular. It's uh, widely conversed about there's a lot of varying opinions on it um i think this is one of those blends too where people love it or people hate it but what from what i've my uh very small amount of research and talking about this blend before is um talking about this with friends before i have never talked about it on um the channel yet but um The people who hate it usually complain about pipe bite or that it's almost a little bit too strong, um, which is another thing that's the pipe bite. Okay. For aromatics, aromatics are really known for biting the hell out of your tongue. Um, but that's usually, I think, I don't know if it has to do with the sugar casing being so strong that just uh, it's, it's something about it. Or if it's just usually that um, a lot of new pipe smokers get into Air Max because that's usually what's more readily available, especially, you know, at gas stations and drugstores and things with Captain Blacks and Borkham Riffs and stuff like that. Um, so I think a lot of people who are just getting into smoking a pipe get into Air Max first and... Um, I think a lot of pipe bite really just tends to be a consequence of a um, just inexperience in smoking and getting your cadence right, getting your pipe packed right and stuff because, you know, you pack tobacco in there, the pipe lights, you smoke it, you think it doesn't matter. But as you smoke more and more, you will realize that it does matter. And every pipe's a little bit different, and I even have pipes that I don't smoke very often, and even I sometimes, uh, you know, fumble with getting them packed just the right way, and it does affect it. It does affect the overall quality and the enjoyment of the smoke, and how many times you have to relight, and um, so I think that's why. So, because I've never experienced pipe bite with this, and I've been smoking for quite a while, so maybe my tongue is calloused to it from you know the decade of aromatic smoking or maybe i finally figured out you know how to have a light draw in my smoking cadence maybe it's both i don't know all i'm saying is if you are brand new to smoking and you happen to be watching this try experimenting with how you pack your bowl the tightness or the looseness of it and 
try to get it to where you now I'm talking a lot and I've already let it go out but try to get it to where you can you know just kind of occasional sifts and not have to really puff on a lot and see if that helps you um, the other thing is this particular blend of tobacco I would not recommend if you're newer to pipe smoking by all means try it if you want I'm not saying you shouldn't at all but I wouldn't recommend it I would recommend this to more of a intermediate smoker because it apparently it can burn your tongue up pretty severe that's the people who don't like it that's usually the other complaint anyways it's got this awesome luxurious and voluminous smoke as you can see it smokes like a balkan in my opinion it, it really does and that's why this one's so interesting and the fact that i was um kind of giving aromatics a, a second chance this summer um because sometimes you're in mixed company and you do want to have a smoke and it's nice to have a smoke but if the people around you are off put by it um then it's not as much fun and you know everybody around you loves the smell of a good aromatic so i figured i'd try them and then I realized this morning, I was like, oh man, you know, I totally forgot that I had this. Um, so, this has been in this jar. I mean, Joe sent this to me almost a year ago. I committed it to a jar in August. Um, so, you know, we're coming up on this being in this jar for 11 months now. So, I don't know, because... Um, this is one of those tobaccos that I've never opened a fresh tin of. Um, I mean, he sent me almost the full tin, but you know, I haven't opened a fresh tin, so I can't speak on really how it smokes straight out of the tin versus some age. I can't really speak on too much of the quality changes in the smoke and the flavor that over roughly a year um i mean i guess i could a little bit but anyways i'm kind of rambling it's early I'm enjoying some coffee my great uncle is in town from washington state and uh he was a fisherman up on the Bering Sea and he's a um not so much now in his older years but he was an avid pipe smoker for most of his life but uh I'm going to go he's at my grandmother's house and I'm going to go pick him up soon and I imagine we're going to do some fishing and probably some smoking So anyways, this, this tobacco, it's just, it's really interesting. It's a, a perfect middle ground bridge, I think. And there's my train of thought. That's where I was going. Yes, it's a perfect bridge between an aromatic and a, a Balkan. Um, because... It's not truly either, but it's also both. So that's what makes this one really unique and really interesting. It's got... It's got that um, really kind of um, thick, creamy, vanilla, kind of the dark Cavendish, black Cavendish kind of... Um, mouthfeel it sits kind of heavy on your palate um it it uh has a the smoke has kind of a quite a gravity on your palate and i find that to be the case with a lot of aromatics however the virginias in it are bright they're awesome it's got a great uh virginia flavor profile going on in here it's like 
you get some of that um, kind of like autumnal wet hay. Like if you can imagine the smell of the hay barn and the maybe the round bales that the uh, silage out in the field where it's starting to ferment or it's been rained on a little bit and you get that kind of mix of smells of the 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 earthy grassy um yeah it's got that going on it's it's really nice it's got you know a good kind of that really nice chewy raisiny kind of very traditional and natural tobacco flavor notes and um it's it's like it's got an it's smoky um but there's like enough cavendish and enough sweetness from the virginias that it kind of kind of cancels out some of the um of the more campfire incense type qualities that you get from uh heavy um lot of kia presence in a lot of the balkan blends But the smoke is definitely there. Um, like if you're a Latakia fan, this does not have enough Latakia um, perhaps to wow you. But it's got enough that I don't think you'll be disappointed. Like this is almost like baby steps in the direction of plum pudding or some or something you know and it's got kind of the similar plum like the dark plum the dark fruit and that like leathery whiskey um earthy kind of smells going on and then the the rum top note on it is really nice it it's like right there at the end and honestly the retro hail and then the flavors that I get at the very end from that um, rum top note reminds me of a little bit like a a, um, a cigar, like a really mild cigar that, you know, has kind of a fruity or a rum flavoring. It's got a really nice floral Virginia bouquet that hits you. And then that um, rum top note, and the and the burleys in it just seem like they just really carry all the flavors pretty well. Like there's this really good um, roasty toasty flavor, you know. It's it's not really that distinctive of a flavor in the profile, I wouldn't say, but it just helps carry all the other flavors and. It really adds a nice, uh, nice, deep and more complex um, roasted kind of, you know, malty, if you will, type flavor. Yeah, this is, it's a really interesting one. Like I said, it's been around since the 50s. It's kind of a famous blend. Uh, I've been reading more about it. Um, Nothing is pretty popular with sailors. And I think that's, I mean, you know, it's the Plum Cake Navy blend. So obviously it was made with sailors in mind. I think it was made to be reminiscent of, you know, the sailors down in the Caribbean. Obviously, you know, a lot of smoking on ships and then going down to get the rum and, uh, you know, whatever. I think they wanted to kind of paint. A picture of that I'll, you know give you a view into that through the flavor profiles of the smoke which I mean I think they did a really good job honestly I think Mac Barron nailed it with this one um, I will say if you are an aromatic smoker predominantly or even that's all you like I think that Mac Barron does have some really high quality aromatics um, and 
if you enjoy English and Balkan blends. It's my opinion that I think you'll like this. It's um, it's just it's really interesting. It's a really interesting middle ground between the two styles. Um, because like I said, it smells and smokes more like a Balkan. It's like the most mild Balkan you've ever had in your life. And it's not very spicy. Like, there's enough of the Cavendish. Um, and I think maybe the rum top note helps too. It takes away from some of the spice notes that you get from the Latakia. But it's still smoky flavored. Um, but yeah, it's, it's wild to me that it's technically an aromatic. I mean, I could admit it to you guys. When I got this and I smelled it, I was like, hmm. And I put it on the, I put it on the shelf with my Balkan tobaccos when it turns out it's an aromatic so I'll leave you guys with that I'll be curious to see what people think about this one um and you know I don't know maybe try it and this and I'm so glad that I remember that I had this one and I probably will get more because I have to say if you find yourself in the situation where, you know, you're at a barbecue or something, there's a lot of folks there, and you really want to have a smoke, you really don't like aromatics, but maybe nobody around you likes the smell of cigars or, you know, the English and the Balkan tobacco smells, if they don't like that, this one's going to be a winner, I think. I think this one will get you through... Moments like that where you really want to smoke, but you need the room note to be pleasant for those 